the 11th annual Paddle for the Peace event. And I want to introduce Chief of the West Moberly First Nation, Roland Wilson, and Elder George Desirley to get this, this event open. Roland? Morning, everyone. Uh, we're going to start with an opening prayer to make this off uh, in a good way. George uh, has taken over for his dad. Max Desiree used to do the prayers for us when, when he was still alive. And uh, George has stepped up now. <clears throat> I wasn't expecting to get all choked up on that. <laughs> um, so we're going to start with an opening prayer. Je George is going to finish it after all the speakers are done with the drum song so we can go to the water. Okay. Uh, if you can, please remove your hats. Thank you, Chief. Wow. So I would just like everybody to empty your minds. Close your eyes, empty your minds. And from your heart, pray with me. Ha kich manito no stawi no, no maso makno ka makio ka kio ateo hanak. No nas kumu na nu mano skisga o sami na utak ka kio ka pisigosia. Ka kio ko yasu ta pitaksenia o mano skisga. Kaui Mskai Auma Mississippi Samina Piago Kakui Manachi Taya Han Dihina Nuhuse O Maki Sichigia Dutamano Mo Makoyas Kanagatimia Koyas Casito Skoya Machigo Makoyas Ngagi Stona Gusnan Gagin stota gusna and kigwayo makitu ya almost to sipi. Wa wiso mo makakui manachi taya. I thank the Creator for this day, for bringing us all here safely to once again paddle this river, to protect it. This we ask from our hearts, and that. We ask that we be recognized and we be heard how important this river is to all of us. This I ask of the Creator in the spirit world for my Father. Hi, hi. Thank you, George. Welcome, everyone. This is, uh, I believe it's the 11th annual paddle that we've had. Yeah. Time to get down to business. So, we um, once again are standing on the shores of the Halfway River. Uh, the event is to celebrate the Peace River. Uh, lots of people are talking about the Peace River, not too many people know about the Peace River. And the idea of today is to get you out on the water, spend some time with friends, and enjoy what is here. And hopefully, it will remain here on this. Um, before I get too much farther, I want to give a great big shout out to Jay Desjoy and all the cooks for breakfast. Let's make a lot of noise. we got a long ways away. We have guests from all over the place. There's a bus here, uh, the Kairos bus, uh, all the way from Vancouver Island. I've heard we've got people, people from Norway here. Um, are they here? <laughs> uh, oh, and I'm supposed to say that there are police officers here. I'm not sure. Are they joining us on the water today? 
We have room on boats. We, um, as everyone knows, this is, this is, uh, uh, in protest of Site C. Site C is a stupid idea. Uh, it's, it's been proven over and over that there's no need to destroy this valley in order to produce that energy. Uh, they can do it with geothermal. Uh, northeastern BC is a geothermal hotspot. Uh, geothermal would put Canada on the map as a global leader for uh, alternative use energies. Uh, there is an abundance of natural gas here, and uh, you know, and, and everyone's always questioning the the need for natural gas. But the province touts it; it's the cleanest burning fossil fuel in the world. But yet, we're not using it here. Um, if you do uh, do natural gas with a uh, do wind with natural gas backup, I don't. I don't know how you could lose with that. Uh, you know, we can't sell it. There's more jobs created. You know, and if, that, if that's what it is, if it's about jobs, then uh, the Shepherd plant in Calgary employs two to 400 people year-round. Uh, the WAC Bennett Dam doesn't, and Peace Canyon, I don't think, employ that many people. You know, we're not opposed to the energy. West Wobley has been very clear that we're not opposed to the creation of the energy. What we're opposed to is the destruction of this valley. There's absolutely no reason for that to happen, for this. I appreciate everybody that's come out uh, to be with us today. Um, I wish you all well. There are some people that are looking for rides. If there's an opportunity to get some of these guys from, uh, Kairos on, from the Kairos bus into boats, uh, that would be great. Also, we have safety boats. There's going to be all kinds of people talking. I just This is a thing for the safety boat operators. You guys are driving around in big jet boats. You need to be careful when you go by these guys in the boats and the canoes. Um, the Peace River is cold. <laughs> it's beautiful, but it's cold. And you don't want to spend too much time swimming around in it. Um, but everyone take care of each other. And this is a family event. We have kids here. We have elders here. Look out for each other on the water. It's a safe, easy paddle. Float down to the to the bare flats. Chief Lynette is here. Um, she's over there. Wave your arm, Chief. Chief Lynette from Prophet River and his, their crew is going to please. Um, uh, they're going to do the uh, uh, the lunch for when we get out down there. So also, I want to thank. The, the membership, the West Bowling membership, you know, they're, uh, they're hardly ever recognized. You know, we get up here and we do all this, this speaking and, and kind of take it for granted that they're behind us on all this. But they are the driving force of why we're standing up here doing this. You know, they're the ones telling us to, to do this. So I appreciate everyone's uh, cooperation in this. And I'm done. Thank you all. Be safe. Thanks, Roland. I guess I should say that uh, the guy in the red jacket here, my name is Joe Foy, and I'm from the Wilderness Committee, and I'm very happy uh, to keep coming back to the Paddle for the Peace and to fight until we get this terrible project which would put this beautiful valley underwater dead and gone. And you're going to hear a lot more about how this year is a very special year because... Now the fight gets real uh, because uh, be our provincial government is trying to do very severe, nasty harm to us this year, especially with the, the farmers, the, the boons, and others where they want to take their homes. And when you want to take somebody's homes and farms, and dig it up this year, that means this year is a different year. I know this paddle is a fun event, but this is not a fun situation we find ourselves in, and it's why. Please turn to the person on your left and your right, give them a big hug, and say thank you very much <laughs> for being here. It's so important. I would like to invite up now Peace Valley Environmental Association, 
uh, director Ken Forrest to welcome you to his home valley here. Thank you very much, Joe. Been here a lot of years, 30 years doing this. I'd like to say thanks to the Peace Valley Environment Association after 30 years of this. And let's go on to the progressive stuff, not the fighting stuff, after this year. What are we here for? Values. Our families and our communities have values. Many of them live in this valley. What are they here for? They care. They share with each other. And they produce a lot of really interesting and diverse things. And we need to keep them here. Government values are different. They are looking for money. They're looking for resources. They're looking for political power. Why is the dam here? It's not for this valley and the people in it. The families here are seen as inconvenient, as collateral damage, as bought off. And if not bought off and they protest, then prosecuted. Something wrong with that picture. So I went in to take a look at the BC government's strategic plan. I wanted to see what their vision was. I couldn't find one. I googled everywhere. I couldn't find a vision. So what kind of a vision are we talking about? A vision of diversity, a vision of agriculture, a vision of wildlife, a vision of communities? Or are we talking about a vision of a dam for 35 years to power an LNG plant after which we've got a dead valley? The legacy. Bill Bennett had a legacy with Williston. The government maybe wants a legacy. They're going to get a legacy, but maybe not the legacy that they want. The legacy they're going to find is going to be a nightmare. It's going to be one with climate change and food problems and reasons that this valley should be producing our agriculture and having our wildlife. What do we want for our children? We want to leave them the tools here for sustainability. We want to have a healthy environment for them here. And we want to have life opportunities with all the things the valley has. This is a moral choice, and we need to make those moral choices now. Thank you very much. Okay, I'd like to call up our next uh, uh, speaker, Chief Lynette Sakoza from Prophet River First Nation. Chief Lynette, I can see she's coming up now. Prophet River, of course, and, and West Moberly are in court fighting for this beautiful valley. Good morning, everyone. Thank you guys for all coming and joining the Paddle of the Peace. And thank you for helping us to, for the government to stop destroying our home. This is our home, and we welcome you to our home. The Peace Valley is, is everything to us, and this is why we're fighting it. And I hope we all have fun on the river today, and we can show them what we use the river for all kinds of reasons, like for our animals, our trees, clean air, everything. And this is what we're fighting for, is our home. And thank you, and I welcome you guys to our home, and I hope we have fun. So Councillor Darcy Chpizzi will say something. Hi, I'm Darcy Chapezi and I'm council with the Prophet River. And I'll probably be just echo of the chief here. Uh, I don't know, this site C here, I think it's uh, it's just a money thing, you know, it's not it's not gonna really benefit benefit us in any way. I think uh, uh, all it is, you know, it, it's, it's a money thing. It's not good for our wildlife. It's not good for our environment. Uh, the way I understand it, uh, work and environment is supposed to go together. Uh, this, when the work's done, uh, the, the environment will continue to be doing the work. You know, long after the work's done, this river is going to continue to be doing the work 24-7. And uh, there's no balance there. I think, uh, like I say, money rules. And uh, that's not going to be 
it's not going to be good for us. Uh, we were impacted too by uh, the Bennett Dam because when you go to uh, Toward Profit right at uh, Bucking Horse, there 70 kilometers uh, crows, crows fly west. Uh, that's where the uh, the Bennett Dam is, you know, into the west mountains there. So we're impacted by it. Our caribou is going gone right now, you know, our wildlife's in trouble. Our moose is going gone. Uh, and it's, it's a man-made problem. It's not a wildlife problem. It's the impact, the footprint that's being left on the, on the land, you know, that's causing all these things to us. And I uh, just want to welcome everybody and I uh, hope everybody have a safe one on the river and have a good time. Thanks. Okay, now it's my great pleasure to call up to the podium Candace Patiki of Yellowstone's Yukon Conservation Initiative. It reminds us of all the great NGOs across the province that understand that Site C, well, I don't know how you explain it other than evil. It's a tremendous waste of time, money, and a great cause of human suffering. And what stands between all that suffering and victory, well, is all of us working together. Candace. <laughs> Well, thanks, Joe. Hi, everybody. <laughs> so, um, Yellowstone to Yukon, what the heck is that? Well, the geography is in the name. <laughs> and uh, the easiest thing is just to say our mission, which is protecting and connecting habitat from Yellowstone to Yukon so people and nature can thrive. So that's what we're all about. Uh, we've been doing that for about 20 years and worked with over 300 partners from all walks of life, including lots of folks that are here. So uh, we do everything in partnership and we've been doing, we've been working here in the piece for about a decade. And I've actually only been with uh, Yellowstone to Yukon, which we call Y2Y, uh, for less than a year. But there's lots of folks here who've been um, working here in the piece on y to ys behalf for longer than me. Wendy Francis is here, Sarah Cox, Tim Burkhart, uh, uh, Jen Hoffman. So... So that's us. Uh, we uh, did the wildlife study that was uh, one of the wildlife studies that was part of the joint, uh, joint review panel uh, where we had Clayton Knapps look at six focal species and, and, uh, de and delivered the news that they were not going to fare well, unsurprisingly, if this uh, ridiculous dam is built. So, um, so that's uh, one of the things we did. And now we're working in the coalition with the PVEA and the Sierra Club and Amnesty and Wilderness Committee and Treaty Aid and all kinds of folks. And, uh, and really our, our goal is just to get more and more thousands of people across Canada and around the world to really understand what's at risk here. Uh, and uh, honored to stand in support of the Treaty 8 First Nation and the landowners and everybody, all you beautiful people that are here. It's so uh, beautiful to be here. I'm from Nelson, and there's a few folks here from Nelson. I'm just going to do the shout out to the home folk thing. <laughs> and uh, there's some, so I think one of the things that really shows that there's a groundswell happening, and I've seen it in the six months that I've been working on this campaign. We've got uh, uh, we've got national groups signed on, we've got people working in the Lower Mainland, we have five or six solidarity paddles that are happening around the province today, uh, including in Nelson. So shout out to all the folks who are tweet tweeting and Facebooking and, uh, and all of that. So I really wish that every uh, Canadian could come to the piece. It really hits you in the heart when you're actually on this river and you actually experience this place. It's a bit of the problem we have because not enough people really get it. And you kind of, in a way, have to come here to really get it, to really understand the power of this river and the power of the people who love this river so deeply. And I wish everybody could come here. I also really feel like we're starting to kill the myths that are out there about Site C. And we've seen the, the work that the... The, uh, the academics and the Royal Society have done this year, have played, a, a, lots of people have done lots, but that was really exciting for me. No energy is clean that kills a mighty river. The lifeblood of the landscape, how could that possibly be clean energy? We've actually just, uh, some of our uh, Y2Y folks have just published a paper in Science Advances that talks 
that talks for the first time about the importance of gravel bed rivers. And we tend to think of the river as the stuff between the banks, but I think a lot of people here will, will understand intuitively and, and, and in their hearts that the whole thing is the river. And certainly everything in, up until the banks is the river. And to, uh, they're actually, the, this research is showing that these, uh, these gravel bed rivers are the most important part of the landscape. They connect everything together. So, um, so that's it for me. I'm really proud to be standing here representing Y to Y and, and, uh, and all our, our 18,000 or 20,000 supporters in support of uh, the treaty rights and the rights of nature. I uh, really want to thank everybody for coming here and thank you Treaty 8 for welcoming us to their territory. Uh, bad projects get stopped and we will stop this one. Thank you. We are standing in the best, in the, in the valley with the best farmland in the north, and it's my great pleasure to call up Lana Popham, NDP Agriculture and Food Credit, to speak to you about that today. Thanks, Lana. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's it's so great to be here, and uh, we were we were told as politicians to keep it short, so I'm going to stick to my promise of doing that. Uh, coming up here this year, I felt a feeling of dread. And when yesterday we went out on the river, but coming down to uh, the area where we took the boats, coming over the hill and seeing the agricultural land that is in such high production right now, so beautiful. The land is so fertile. I felt like that my stomach got ripped out of my body. I felt almost like a trauma looking at it. It can't happen. We as an NDP caucus have said it's the wrong project. We're putting forward alternatives. We're standing with you. We want it to stop. It's part of our agriculture plan for the province. It's part of our energy plan to have an alternative. And we're fighting hard. But the one thing we've got to do as politicians, you saw all the politicians up here with me. We have councillors. We have Elizabeth May. We all have to stick together as progressives to stop this project. We can't let politics get in the way. You know, Christy Clark says, that she wants it to get to a point of no return. The only person who should not return is Christy Clark next May. Thank you. A real champion for this valley has been the Sierra Club and Anna Simeon, and I want to invite Anna right up here today. Just a fearless, tireless worker. Come on up. Thank you. Um, my name is Anna Simeon, and for the past three years, I've lived and breathed the peace, waking and sleeping. It's been in my thoughts. And yesterday morning, the river felt we needed a bit more intimacy. So when I went to get water for washing, I slid clothes and all into the river. And it was a mighty experience. I can't help but thinking that actually the BC cabinet could do with a dunking like that. <laughs> it would probably bring them to their senses that used to be a cure for lunacy. <laughs> and I cannot think of another word other than perhaps go down the criminal route and the sin against humanity and the perversity and the, an abomination that this dam would be. If there is anything sacred in human beings, in our feelings and our connections, this land is it. We must stop this dam. Uh, over the past few months, I've been very encouraged traveling up and down the province from Courtney to Golden and from Machosan to Kamloops to see and hear from many people who have never been involved in this fight before, who thought that dams were clean energy, now people are waking up. We have a great opportunity with the international community taking an interest. A UNESCO mission is coming specifically to investigate the impact of the peace of the Site C Dam on all the way down to the Peace Athabasca Delta, which is a World Heritage Site. They are coming in September. They will be here two weeks. And this is our opportunity to make sure that Justin Trudeau and the federal cabinet doesn't hear the end of it. 
until they get off that fence and stop the bloody dam. Thank you. Wow, there's this guy, Joe Foy from the Wilderness Committee. That's me. I'm supposed to speak for a couple minutes. Okay, so this is what I'm going to speak about. I, I, I represent the Wilderness Committee. We have some 60,000 uh, supporters. There's a lot I could say about the Site C Dam, but I want to say this. Right now, in Ottawa, there are permits sitting on the cabinet desk of Mr. Trudeau. Uh, if those permits do not get signed off, this project does not go forward. We need to be writing Mr. Trudeau and his cabinet members, especially his fisheries and transportation cabinet members today. Not once, not twice, not three times, but over and over again. Because Mr. Trudeau has made promises, which I believe he believes in, that we're going to have a more just nation, that this cannot happen on these First Nations lands. We need to write, there is hope, we will win, but we need to make sure those permits are not signed off. They must not be signed off. You cannot sign off on those permits and live up to the promises made. They were good promises, they were made with a good heart, and they should not be broken. And finally, in my last few seconds of speech, we have an election coming up. This cannot happen, and anyone who says it should happen has no business being near the reins of power. Do not forget that, but more than that, with every fiber of your being, whatever you're able to do, make sure that anyone who thinks that flooding this beautiful valley is nowhere near any position that can tell the rest of us what we should do. Please do that, because... As I said, this year it gets real, folks. They're going to push people off their land. We, that, we got to stop it. We will stop it. And that's what I want to use my breath and my time to say to you today. And now on that note, I would like to invite my friend Craig Benjamin from Amnesty International. Thank you. I want to acknowledge the people of Treaty 8. It is an honor to be here on your land. This land, the people, all of you are such an inspiration. I came here from Ottawa. There's a lot of talk in Ottawa about reconciliation. I wish more people, I wish more of our colleagues from the House of Commons were here to see people walking the path of reconciliation. Because this is what it looks like when Indigenous and non-Indigenous people stand together and say, we believe in the same thing. <laughs> we believe in honoring the treaty. We believe in protecting the earth for our children and grandchildren. We believe in justice. We believe in human rights. And let me tell you what isn't reconciliation trying to pit Indigenous and non-Indigenous people against each other over a short-sighted, unnecessary project that does no benefit for anyone but a select few. That's not reconciliation, and we have to reject it. And as other speakers have said, having your voice heard is crucial at this point, at this moment, and I hope that all of us will go home after the day with renewed energy, renewed commitment to raise your voice. Call your member of parliament, call your member of the legislature, write a letter, sign a petition, sign a postcard. Don't do it once, do it over and over and over again because this fight isn't over, it's in our hands to win it. Thank you. We have someone here from Prince George. I would like to speak today because my cousin got shot in Dawson Creek. He went there for a good reason to stop the Sight Sea Dam from being built. And they tried to take his voice away. And when he finally got that voice, they shot him. 
and he wants to stop sightsee. He talks to Dad every morning, telling him, asking him things, asking him what he's going to do today. And that's going on for a long time. And when it, this place is going to be flooded, oh, when this place is going to be flooded, well, we're not going to let that happen because we're good people. Stop sightsee! Good job. Oh, the people want to know your name. Keith. Keith Larbier. Now, now I would like to invite up a... You remember when the 250 academics came out and spoke out in a clear voice about what a terrible project Site C Dam is. I'd like to I'd like to invite up two of those academics now. Karen Baker and Rita Wong. Can you come forward please? Oh, there you're already here. You're fast. Hi, everybody. Um, so I'm Karen from the University of British Columbia. Uh, Hello, I'm Rita from Emily Carr, University of Art and Design. Mm -hmm. We got invited out here last year by Keepers of the Water and Caleb Bain and encountered a beautiful river and some amazing people who are already starting to organize around Sightsee, like Yvonne Tupper. And we were really inspired, and that led us to uh, organize 350 scholars across Canada now who signed on to our statement. You can read all about it at sightseestatement.org. We'll just say a couple of things today. The first is that um, the concerns about Sightsee are being taken so seriously by academics that the president of the Royal Society of Canada did something unprecedented. The president signed a letter directly to Prime Minister Justin Trudeau sharing those concerns. Trudeau's office declined to respond, so shame on the government. Shame. shame. Uh, but we're not giving up. Uh, we're continuing to uh, contact the ministers, and we encourage all of you to do that as well, as was said earlier, to stop those permits from happening. Um, but it's an interdisciplinary uh, endeavor, and so we are scholars from like legal arts, um, humanities, social sciences, economics, etc. And um, one of the legal scholars, Gordon Christie, who wishes he could be here with you today, He's made it very clear that this is um, this project, this dam, violates the rule of law. And we're just, as Canadian citizens, we need to hold the, the governments accountable to their own laws. And that it's dishonorable to be clear-cutting out there when this is still in the courts. There's a lot more research available on the website, but I'll just tell you about one of the things we found. We took BC Hydro's own numbers and the information that was available to the joint review panel, but we did research that they didn't have the time or the interest to do. So we stepped up to the plate and we found that Site C has more significant adverse environmental impacts than any project ever reviewed under the history of the Canadian Environmental Assessment Act. That was passed in 1992. We also looked at greenhouse gas emissions reductions and compared the greenhouse gas emissions from Site C versus the alternatives. And you know what we found? Site C is not any greener than the renewables, the wind and solar that we could have been using. So here we are standing here today with a government that refused to do the analysis because they refused to submit this to the BC Utilities Commission. But had they done that analysis, they wouldn't be able to stand up and say that this is a green, clean project. It's not. Yeah. We'd really love anyone who's in the audience who has an academic connection to, uh, to come find us. We're going to do more reports and issue more analysis over the summer. This isn't enough, we know. Um, it's all about winning hearts and minds because those in power aren't necessarily listening to the facts. That's why what you're doing today is so important. 
Um, but we'd love to offer what we can, which is really robust independent research that supports the concerns that you're airing today. Thanks. The fight for this valley is growing and it'll continue to grow until we get this place protected altogether. I would like to invite up uh, George Heyman, NDP, uh, Environment and Green Economy Technology Critic. George happens to be the uh, MLA for our office in Vancouver and a good friend. Thanks, Joe. Thank you, everyone. It's, uh, it's an honor to be standing here with you today. It's a great day to stand with First Nations to protect traditional territories and traditional uses. It's a great day to stand with residents of this valley who've lived here and made a living here to protect it. And it's a great day to stand together and paddle together to protect a wild and beautiful river. A year ago, a year ago this month, Christy Clark and her inept energy minister introduced a motion into the legislature which was completely unnecessary, but the motion said that this house stands together to support the Site C Clean Energy Project. There was only one reason to do that. It was to divide British Columbians, to divide communities, to pretend that these jobs were necessary and this dam was necessary when they refuse to submit the plan to the BC Utilities Commission. I'm happy to tell you that every single New Democrat MLA, myself, Lana Popham and Scott Fraser are here today, but every single one of us voted against that motion. And we voted against it because it was wrong. But we also believe that it's important to talk about what the right alternatives are. So I spent the summer looking at the numbers on Site C in detail and looking at the alternatives, and I became more convinced than ever that it's wrong on every single count. It's wrong on agricultural land count. It's wrong on the environmental count. It's wrong on the First Nations count. It's wrong on the clean energy count. It's wrong on the economics because it's more costly than the alternatives. And it's even wrong on the jobs count because there are more jobs in energy conservation and renewables than there is in Site C. And they're in every community around British Columbia without the disruption that this project will cause. So we stand with you today and we paddle with you today to bring this project to an end. Yes, we need clean energy at some point in the future, but this is last century's energy. Let's build the clean, environmentally non-intrusive energy of the future together. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. George, thanks for your comments. Tough act to follow. And I made a few notes because I sometimes get off track. And you'll be hearing more from uh, Ken and Arlene Boone this afternoon, whose place we're going to end up at. Uh, but he's asked me as Vice President of Landowners to say a few words. First of all, I'd just like to thank all of you for being here from near and far. It's so nice to have this support. Uh, and uh, it's been a tough fight, a long tough year for those of us in the Peace Valley landowners. Uh, and the battle has taken its toll, physically, mentally, financially, and emotionally. But we remain committed and united as the fight goes on and it's a good fight. I'd just like to pause for a minute and mention one of our stalwart supporters, Lee Summer, who many of you know used to run one of the uh, uh, safety boats. He was injured a couple of weeks ago in a farm accident, and uh, they managed to pin him kind of back together, but it'll be a while before he's back on the river, and I'd just like to uh, uh, have a thought or two for Lee. He's been a really strong supporter. Like a number of the landowners in the valley, uh, my family's roots run deep in the Peace River. Uh, we first settled here over 90 years ago, and uh, throughout that time, the Peace River Valley has been a main focus of all our activities. It has fed us, watered us, sheltered us, entertained us, and stimulated us, and in spite of progress, it continues to do that to this day. As landowners, we have a history that we are proud of, and each day that we live in the valley, enforces what a special place it is to be. You know, I was on the tractor last year going around the field listening to, I'm 
modern these days. I have a radio on the tractor, and I'm listening to uh, CBC, and ALR chair Richard Bullock came on, and uh, I don't think he'd mind if I stole his quote. I, I almost wrote, drove off the field. I was so happy. But he said it would be a crime against humanity to flood this valley. And we look forward to your continued support to ensure that doesn't happen. Thank you for coming. And I know you're anxious to get on the river. Have a safe paddle. Talk to you later. Well, at the end of the day, we need jobs and we need electricity. And hydro provides that. I, I don't like this protest. <laughs> but at what cost do we need those jobs? Yes, we need what we need. Yes, what we need is green jobs. Now bend over, my friend. <laughs> It's going to take time though. It's, it's not going to come right away. We need some interim solutions. Well, with your attitude, it's going to take forever. So bend over again. <laughs> come on. <laughs> well, it's the sacrifice for the few, of the few, for the good of the many. I'll let the few answer. No way! I don't think there's any words needed for that. Hey, 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 hey. Let the camera around here. You guys are terrorists. You're the terrorist. Look at all the people you upset. <laughs> yeah, I guess there's a lot of people here. <laughs> yeah. I apologize. I guess that's right. <laughs> Sorry about it. Oh, no, no. So when we paddle down the piece, we've got some awesome speakers at the other end. You're going to hear from all sorts of folks, including... Elizabeth May, leader of the Green Party. You're going to hear from Art Napoleon, Susan Smith, and Grand Chief Stuart Phillip. You're going to hear from Ken and Arlene Boone, the farmers who own that land. There's a whole roster here of great speakers. It's going to be an awesome afternoon. And to send us off in a good way, in a good and proper way on that beautiful river, I'd like to invite up now George Desolet, Who's going to send us off, George? Oh, you're sneaking up behind me. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Foy. So before I uh, sing a prayer song, I'd just like to say a few words. I know my father used to do this, so I guess i got to carry on the tradition. So good morning. Welcome to the 2016 Dirty Energy Peaceful Protest. I, I, I mean, a paddle for the peace. Sorry. Well, maybe I'm not sorry. It is a dirty energy project. This river, river downstream from the dam is never going to be clean again. This Halfway River is murky right now. That's because of all the rain. The Peace River is going to be like that. All the way to the Peace Athabasca Delta. And, uh, and it just astounds me how they could think this is clean energy. They're going to spoil some. I mean, they've already spoiled the Peace River from the WAC Bennett Dam. It's full of silt, mercury. All the fish are contaminated. Even up its tributaries, you know, some 60, 70 kilometers away on the, on the uh, Crooked River, uh, pa uh, over by Summit Lake, Bear Lake area. They've got uh, contaminated uh, fish over there. You can only eat maybe the size of a cursory, fi uh, 
cursey kiss uh, once a week. And one of our families, the chief's family, Chief Wilson, they live on that river. They fish for a living too. But anyways, uh, and we, uh, the chief and I went to uh, Victoria, brought some fish along from over there, asked Christy Clark if she wanted to uh, have lunch. No way. <laughs> but I guess one of the things I've wanted to say is that uh, since the last paddle here, when we all gathered, since then I've heard uh, BC Hydro, provincial government, all saying how they meaningfully consulted First Nations people. For nine years, they said. Well, in the last nine years, we, the people of West Mobley, have not been heard. Because that's what we've been telling them for nine years. No damn way! And when they came to West Mobley, our people wouldn't let them speak about Saichi Dam. Instead, what we talked about was how that dam was going to impact the collective treaty rights of treaty number eight people. The people that live in this valley, that make a living in this valley. The wildlife that lives here, they're going to be heavily impacted even more than us humans. But in their report, that's not what they said. I think basically they just came to West Moberly just to say they talked with the Indians so that they can paint the picture that they did consult and know they did not. As a matter of fact, my father, at one point during that meeting, he stood up and uh, just a sec, let me get this right here. My father stood up and offered to teach them the languages of the Danaza, the Cree, and the Soto. Because my father, Max Desjolais, spoke all three languages fluently. And said that, so that way he could explain to them and have them understand the meaning of the word no. Because they didn't seem to understand the English meaning at all. Of course, there was no takers. So, uh, you know, they said that they've had support and everything from First Nations. I wonder where they got it. I mean, when they did the uh, JRP, what is it called? Uh, the Joint Review Panel, every First Nation individual from Prince George to Peace River, where they held them, got up and told them, no, and this is why, which was exactly what West Moberly did a number of years ago when they, when they came to West Moberly. So here we are today, all of us, to show we do not support this dirty energy project. And there was also other places in BC today that is doing the same thing. They're picking up the paddle in their areas. They're paddling rivers. 
And I think some places is maybe on lakes and some places on the ocean, I believe. And there was also a number of other things that also occurred. The young lady, Chris, Christian Henry, is that her name? She, uh, she did a fast. The uh, the guy, Jim McIntyre, did I get that name right? He got shot for protesting. But you don't hear anything about those people from the BC government. You know, nothing in the news. And those people were there to support us, all of us, in solidarity. So based on that, on my father's behalf, I say hi, hi. Thank you. And in his words, if he was here, he would say, Site C is not a done deal. And me, as his replacement, I say, it will never be passed beyond the point of no return. Because we are going to stop it. Like my shirt. So everybody have a safe trip. I'm going to sing you guys a prayer song. It's a long song. But during the prayer song, you can start making way and launching your boats, and I will continue singing. So Chrissy, my wife, Darcy, Chrissy's son. Come a little closer together. I don't want to be the only one on the mic. <laughs> you won't be. It might be better that way. Yeah, it's okay.
Yeah.